Hello buddy, Sam here, engineer, MBA, and investor. In today's video, I want to talk about the top three reasons why 2022 will be a huge year, huge year for CRISPR. But before we do that, before we jump into today's video, really quick, like this video, smash the like button, destroy that like button. If you've not subscribed, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell for our videos to get to you faster. So I want to take a look at the top three reasons why I believe that this year, 2022, will be a big year for CRISPR, right? I've made previous videos on this, especially in late 2021, early part of this year. I made a couple of videos why I believed at the time that CRISPR was here to stay. And I, those beliefs are still the same, right? Nothing no fundamentals have changed to the point where my thesis has changed in the downward side. Everything is trending upwards, positive. The only thing that's trending downward or sideways at this point is the stock price of these companies. But as I mentioned in the past, stock markets and fundamentals have always been, always been uncorrelated. It's always been proven in bear markets, uh, bull markets. I mean, unfortunately, it's the side of the business that you have to uh, except, you know, if you're getting into these types of environments, right? So I do want to talk about the top three reasons. Again, my first number one reason is clinical trials updates. So we know as we speak today with this video is that over 175 patients have been dosed through CRISPR-Cas9 and a lot more will be dosed in the upcoming months. In, in fact, in fact, we've gotten data from CRISPR therapeutics CTX001, CTX110, but we'll be also getting data for their Viacite program, which is type one diabetes. On top of that, we've already gotten additional data from NTLA2001 from, of course, NTLA therapeutics um, for their program for in vivo. And we got the data a few weeks ago. It was amazing, but we will be getting data for phase two now as they chosen their appropriate dosage, which is 80 milligrams per patient. And we know they've dosed a total of 15 patients so far. We'll also be getting data from Caribou Biosciences from CBO 10 in the upcoming weeks. It should be anytime soon at some point. We know this because the CEO has reiterated that in latest webcast conferences that they're on track, everything's on track, no delays. We'll be getting data from their CBO010 program, which just as a reminder, it's all about CAR T cells. It's all about using their Chardonnay's RDNA technology to basically, basically have a high efficiency, low, low risk technology preparatory to Caribou Biosciences. So we'll be getting data from that end, right? And then we have other companies, of course, that we're keeping our eyes on. Beam Therapeutics, I've mentioned they're going to be, they're going to be dosing their first patient for Beam 101 later this year. And also, also we know that Editas is doing some things there, but you know you know how it is with Editas these days. Uh, I'll leave it up to you to, to wonder what, what I meant by that. So the second point I want to talk about is the Cures 2.0 Act bill. So the reason why it's called 2.0, like I mentioned in previous video that I covered this bill, is that this has already been passed in 2016. It was bipartisan, and we're expecting this bill to be bipartisan support as well. So that means Democrats and conservatives in U.S. will most likely back this bill. And actually, this ties into my top three point as well. So I'm going to cover both of those points that still are separate, right? So because of what we saw in the last two years with the pandemic, I strongly believe in the upcoming years we're going in a post-pandemic world where biosecurity is going to be so important and we're going to see government spending a lot more, a lot more on healthcare, a lot more on vaccines, a lot more on treatments and being proactive rather than reactive, right? So we'll be seeing that a lot in the upcoming upcoming months slash years. And I truly believe Cures 2.0 Act Bill will accelerate that, right? I've covered that. Again, if you're curious to see what this bill is all about, check out our previous video in our video catalog with hundreds, hundreds of videos at this point. But I did make a specific video on this bill talking how, about how it's going to reduce delays, reduce costs. It's just going to be great for CRISPR companies, specifically genome editing companies. It's just going to be amazing. And of course, my third point, like I mentioned, the post-pandemic world, 
I think we're moving away from a reactive world when it comes to health issues to a proactive world because now we have, for the first time ever, technologies, technologies that we can leverage to make it happen, right? Whether that is with virtual telehealth, such as Haladoc, or that is with genome editing tools like CRISPR, companies like CRISPR Therapeutics and Telier, Beam Therapeutics, Editas, and all these companies, Caribou Biosciences, and of course, all these genomics companies that we've seen with the lower cost of genome sequencing. We've seen this with previous slides from ARK Invest talking about how you know, the cost of, of genome sequencing has been decreasing, right? And as you decrease costs, you allow less barriers of entry, which means you allow more players in the field. More competition is always good, especially in the legacy world when it comes to healthcare. I truly believe healthcare will be disrupted. And I think this year, at the end of this year, we'll be having this discussion with these three points being the accelerators for CRISPR, the progress. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Do you guys think I'm crazy? Do you guys think I'm way far? I mean, we'll see how it goes. It's just a prediction, not financial advice, just education. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful Sunday, guys. Like this video if you found value. Subscribe if you're not. And I'll see you guys during the week. Have a beautiful, beautiful Sunday once more. Thank you.